Hello. All right. Um, as you heard from my bio, I've been doing um, socially engaged collaborative projects with communities since the mid-70s. But what I'm going to talk about today are three more recent projects, um, which you see there. So let's see. I have the clicker, right? Uh, the first is the Righteous Conversations Project, which I co-started in 2011. I teach at Harvard Westlake School, which is a, a private high school, and some parents came to me, some moms, and said, uh, and many of them were Holocaust children of Holocaust survivors, and they said, we want to do something. We're not sure what form it should take, but we realize that we're at this historic moment uh, in which the Holocaust happened 70 years ago. So the survivors are now in their 80s and 90s. We have about 10 years when young people can actually hear the stories of the Holocaust from the mouths of the people who experienced it. And, um, you know, a lot of schools don't even talk about the Holocaust. They don't have time. Uh, some of them will do it in a day. Some of them don't do it at all in the history lessons. So we felt this was very urgent. And so we created the Righteous Conversations Project to bring teens and the survivors together. And um, actually, I should just note uh, the woman on the left there is Helen Freeman. I'm going to tell a story about her in just a second. And what we do, we, we came up with the idea of the kids not just hearing the stories, but the kids hearing the stories and then thinking how those stories connected to their own lives. Um, and so uh, this is Kurt Lowens, um, and he's sharing his story. And what we do then is we create public service announcements that relate to those. So I think the easiest way to understand what we do is to give you an example. Um, in our very first year of 2011, Helen Freeman was sharing a story about how she was working in a factory as essentially slave labor, making parts to airplanes. And she was thinking as she was making these parts, the people who are riding in these airplanes don't know that this is being made through slave labor. And um, as the kids were sitting there, this one girl thought to herself, I don't know who made my jeans. I, I could be actually contributing to this myself, that you know, buying products that would promote this idea of slave labor. And so they uh, created a PSA that summer, a public service announcement. Um, it's actually the, this, this is our website. You can go to our website and look at all the PSAs that we've made over the years. Um, but that particular one was called Learn the Difference. And it was about conscious consumerism and how you know, do you know the products you're buying, who, who's made them. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've also done um, animated Holocaust survivor stories, so, so that's another thing that we, we do. Okay. Then in 2013, I was approached by a company called PeaceWorks Travel that um, was taking kids to countries recovering from conflict so that kids could be immersed in learning about history, particularly learning about genocides and that sort of thing, countries recovering from conflict, and wanted to infuse that with digital media. So we started the Digital Storytelling Adventures, and we've been now to seven countries. Yeah, I have the list there. We're going to Guatemala this summer. And um, the first trip we did was to Lao, or Laos, as we often call it in this country, but it's Lao. Um, and what happened there is during the Vietnam War era, there was a secret war on Laos where we um, were bombing them daily. And it was actually, Congress didn't even know about it at the time. Uh, it was all exposed. But here we are um, taking these teenagers to a country in which daily people are being blown up from these little bombs that are all over the landscape. Um, and, you know, these are American kids who feel terrible, I mean, and feel guilty, and, you know, they weren't even born, they weren't even a, an idea at the time this happened. But meeting people like Mr. Ye Li, whose legs are blown off, he's a Hmong rice farmer and tilling his field, and the, the thing exploded, and little Kei Yang, who lost his eyes. And um, here they are um, meeting the family, the uh, Ye Li family. And what the kids do in our program is they create um, short films, uh, again, digital storytelling, where they're trying to connect things in their own lives to tell the story of these people in these different countries, but also making it personal. So for example, um, The Wings of Peace was a piece that uh, uh, two girls of Japanese-American descent connected what, what had happened, the black rain that happened in Vietnam with, I mean, in Laos with um, th what happened during um, 
you know, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and they were teaching people to fold cranes. And anyway, they were connecting it to their own lives. And uh, some of the pieces are about hate speech and bullying uh, and that sort of thing. And one of the things um, Isabel asked us also to think about, in addition to aha moments, is when the participants made the projects their own. And so you, you see my example of that in the Righteous Conversations project with the um, Lao program. The kids came back to LA and they thought, what could we do? And they created a club, say no to UXO, UXO is unexploded ordinance. And they raised money for the Yaley family because now he can't till his fields anymore. Um, but he could become a businessman and actually bring a small tractor into his community and rent that out to other farmers. So the kids raised doing you know, lots of different things. They raised over $3,000 to buy this family a tractor. Um, we also went to Rwanda. Wah! Sorry about that. Um, we also went to Rwanda, which was just 20 years after a genocide in which Hutus and Tutsis were literally hacking each other to death with machetes. I mean, neighbors, family members were killing other families. It was unbelievable. 20 years later, they're living side by side in peace. It's actually illegal uh, to talk about Hutus and Tutsis in Rwanda today. But um, one of the things we also noticed is in addition to dealing with recovering from a genocide, um, there is the problem that you see all over the developing world, which is the lack of clean drinking water. I've got my little yellow arrow there to point that out. These are our students interacting with kids in Rwanda. And one of our kids, a 15-year-old boy, <laughs> came up with this way to bring clean water to communities around the world uh, as a way, by bringing these water filters. He figured out actually basically how to do it for free. He could create a sort of network for people who were traveling there anyway to bring these water filters. And it was really quite an ingenious idea and he formed his own tax exempt organization and has now brought water filters and clean water to communities in about eight different countries. And then um, finally, um, for the last couple of years, I've been working with Windows um, with the I Can, We Can um, project, the digital storytelling project. And the first um, iteration of that was when we brought together a bunch of teens uh, who learned about the issue from Windows staff and also from uh, a survivor. Uh, and it was really a powerful and intense. I still can't even believe we did it in a week. In a week, um, these teens worked with teachers and took the information they heard and created three short public service announcements. Um, the, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you trauma you can't see, uh, but the middle one is called Emergency Stop, where they made a connection between the violence in the lyrics of, of pop music and the cycle of violence, and the last one was called The Monster Within, which was about how do you not feed that impulse within each of us to do violence and harm others? So let's show you the first one, or the trauma you can't see. Where the hell were you? There's, there's traffic coming home from the store. There was traffic coming home from the store? You really expect me to believe that there was traffic coming home from the store? I didn't even give you permission to go to the store, Ashley. John, there, there was traffic. There, there was nothing I could, I could do. Why would you lie to me? You loved me, right? So why would you lie to me? I'm not. I'm not lying. I'm telling you. You're going to turn our son into a liar, Ashley. You're a terrible mother. John. Don't do this right now. You're gonna, you're humiliating me in front of my son and I just I won't have it. John, I, I couldn't. Maybe I should ask him where you've been, huh? No, leave him out of this. He David, David. David, you've been like this all semester. You really need to apply yourself more. Are you on drugs? echoes uh, what we talked about a lot this morning, the ways in which you know, you bring that experience into your life and people maybe don't have empathy, don't see what's going on with you.
And then uh, the digital storytelling process, the Windows staff um, crafted a whole process to bring into the shelters. I'm sure many of you, how many of you here participated in this within your programs? Oh, a few of you, great. To, to just use um, you know, those digital tools to um, empower people to have, help have people tell their stories. Stop. And then just in closing, this is the last project I'm, I'm done with Windows. It's going to be uh, in the fall. We're going to be screening it. It's a film called IMB. This is a still from it. Um, and it's a retelling of the Greek myth of Demeter and Persephone, which is a mother-daughter story, which we think of as how we came to have seasons. But there are actually rapes in that story. There's a lot of violence. And there's also a story of healing and redemption. Um, and so I'm excited about having made that film and sharing it and using it to raise awareness about this issue. Thank you.